Hi there. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Puneet and I'm head of data science and data engineering at Carousel. I'm very excited to share my thoughts on this very interesting topic, shopping on the feed. How technology helps assure that content and messaging drives commerce. Here is the agenda for this talk. I will start with sharing some context around Carousel that will later help me make a case for how technology plays an important role in powering content feeds. I will share some context and stats to align on the importance of content feeds. Then the heart of the talk will be how artificial intelligence or more specifically machine learning helps with feed personalization, optimization and presentation. Let's get started. Carousel is one of the largest and fastest growing classifieds marketplace in the world. Carousel is available in eight Southeast Asia markets now. More than 250 million user generated listings is a testimony of the trust users place in Carousel and the value it provides. Eight years back, Carousel co-founders started this journey with a mission to inspire everyone in the world to start buying and selling from each other making second hand the first choice. It has been an amazing journey and the recent investments by prestigious groups like Naspers, Talenor and Naver has brought the company valuation very close to the magical dollar one billion mark. Data science team at Carousel is responsible for leveraging the power of machine learning and AI to serve company's mission. And there are a wide variety of interesting, challenging and impactful problems that data science team has been working on. The theme most relevant to this talk is content discovery as search and recommendation algorithms power almost all of our content feeds. With that context around carousel, let's start with the topic for this talk. Before we talk about how technology helps here, let's start with why. Why content feeds even matter for e-commerce? I'm sure you can relate to this. Today we are surrounded by bottomless content feeds that we can go on scrolling endlessly. There is simply too much information to consume and process. Therefore, we need smart and highly reliable filters that can give us the information we most care about without missing important and relevant stuff and without introducing undesirable biases. Two most common approaches to content filtering are content based filtering and collaborative filtering. Now content based filtering on the left recommends items based on item to item similarity. For example, if user liked a comedy movie, more comedy movies will be recommended. If you buy a Harry Potter book, more Harry Potter books will be recommended to you. Now collaborative filtering on the right leverages the wisdom of the crowd. It tries to learn content associations and user similarity based on the rich volumes of user engagement data on the platform. Such content associations go much beyond what item metadata can capture. For example, recommending say Nerf guns to someone who searched for Harry Potter book. Now this is where the magic of serendipitous discovery happens. The personalized content feeds powered by these algorithms are no doubt delivering great value today. I will not go through the details in this busy slide, but just to summarize, personalization has proven extremely successful in improving user engagement and retention, generating significant business value for a wide variety of online content platforms like Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, and so on. I picked this image from a Google research paper about YouTube recommendations. It is a very apt diagram to depict the three important stages of content feed creation. First one is personalization. This stage is the primary filter that deals with discovering a small subset of personalized results based on user profile and activity history. Now, second stage is optimization. Now, this stage deals with deciding the final ranked list of recommendations 
while optimizing for multiple objectives. Final stage is presentation that deals with the placement and rendering of the content feed. We will now talk about how machine learning helps with each of the three stages. Let's start with personalization. Personalization at a high level has three important components. First, there is content that you want to recommend. For example, listings on carousel or videos on YouTube. Then, of course, the consumers, users of this content. And finally, the personalization algorithms that match the content to the users. Let's see how AI can prove to be a game changer for each one of these. Starting with content. Content is like an iceberg. Without AI, we have a very shallow understanding of content, only the surface level. AI allows us to develop a deeper understanding of this content. It helps go beyond syntactic and gain semantic understanding. It enables us to discover content associations and gives us the ability to predict. Let's look at this further using an example. This is an example listing from Carousel Singapore. Here someone is selling a second-hand iPhone X. Let's see what useful questions can AI help answer that are hard or nearly impossible to answer otherwise. First, about image. How appealing or repulsive is this image? And how can AI help make it more attractive? Then what would be a fair price for this second-hand smartphone? Is this one a good value for money? What would uh, a user feel about the content associations? Once we know that a user is interested in buying an iPhone, what next? Can we show other similar iPhone listings or even other smartphones as alternate options? We can even recommend AirPods as they are related. All these are important but tough questions. It requires smart AI solutions to make dependable predictions. Now let's move on to our second dimension, users. Just like content, by default, we have a very narrow understanding of our users. Standard demographic information and activity history, that's all. But there is so much more to our users than just that. AI helps us develop a more holistic 360 degree view of our users. Let's again look at an example. This is a hypothetical user on Carousel. Any resemblance to me is purely coincidental. Let's say these are various listings that this user explored or bought during last few weeks. I'll wait a sec so that you can get a feel for it. Now, the narrow view for this user would be 40 year male who often browses, buys toys and books. That's not bad, but it's still very limited. But if you look closely, you can clearly see some more interesting patterns. For example, what age group do the books and toys belong to? Genre and author affinity for the books, brand and category inclination for toys. This kind of deeper user understanding can help answer many useful questions. For example, what would this user like to buy next? What matters to this user? For example, new versus used, meetup versus delivery. It's not hard to imagine how such comprehensive user understanding will allow us to better serve our users. Now that we have reached the third pillar of personalization, the matchmaking, this life partner compatibility table here is pretty representative of how we typically go about matching content to users. This user is a dragon and all dragons love rats. Let's show all rats to this user. He would love it. Sounds familiar, right? I believe this approach is like painting the wall using a very broad brush. Every single brick is painted exactly the same. And this is what a deep learning based relationship matchmaking algorithm might look like. According to the supporting article, this ML model was able to spot mutual interests, find compatibility based on emotions and personality patterns, and is even robust against deceptive presentations definitely appears more trustworthy than depending only on your date of birth, isn't it? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not recommending that you let AI decide your life partner. The point I'm trying to make is that AI 
will take rich content understanding and user understanding signals as input and provides us with the ability to make very fine matching decisions. In contrast to painting the wall, AI provides the tools to create a fine art. To summarize, AI is a powerful tool to help develop deep content understanding, gain comprehensive user understanding, and produce fine match between the two. It really empowers us to tailor make experiences and communications to delight our users. Now let's move on to stage two, feed optimization. Once we have identified a list of items based on personalization algorithms, the next important task is to decide their order. Item relevance is an obvious factor that is important, but that is not the only factor. Many other factors need to be considered in order to generate engaging and rewarding content feeds. Let's take the example of search algorithm at Carousel that incorporates multiple factors while deciding the ranking of search results. First and most important is of course relevance, both at keyword level and at user level, the searcher. Freshness of an item is another important factor, especially in a C2C marketplace like Carousel. Then uh, a listing's past performance is a good indicator of its future performance and hence influences its future ranking. Content quality matters both at listing level and at seller level. Also given Carousel is a multi-sided marketplace with multiple stakeholders at any point of time, certain listings and sellers have higher priority. Now that search needs to take into account. This is just a rough picture of our search algorithm as I'm not at the liberty to share very specific details, but I hope you get the idea. This is another example from Uber Eats. Their ranking algorithm also balances multiple objectives while optimizing their recommendations. Often these objectives are at conflict with each other. So multi-objective optimization problem is complex and machine learning has proven highly beneficial in delivering practical solutions. Finally, let's move on to stage three, feed presentation. Even after the content feed is ready, we are still not done. Unless that content feed is presented right, it might not be able to generate desired success. For example, where to place the content feed? What UI format to pick? How do we ensure the desired level of diversity across content feeds. Uh, also, which messaging channel to pick the in app or email or app notifications. Even EDM timing needs to be personalized based on the user and the content. We today have multiple recommendation sections on carousel landing page. We have chosen these sections to target our recommendations across a few important dimensions. First one is user activity history. Some sections provide recommendations based on users most recent actions on the platform, whereas others try to capture users interests over a longer period of time. Second one is granularity of recommendations. Some sections are very specific and provide recommendations at listing level. Some are at keyword or collection level and some are very broad category level. Now different ML solutions help power each one of these content feeds and help deliver the content feed diversity that we seek. Now no recommendation talk can be complete without a mandatory mention of Netflix. The scenario I would like to highlight here is how Netflix uses machine learning to personalize their landing page for every single user on their platform. It's then no surprise that 75% of the content watched on Netflix is based on their personalized recommendations. That brings me to the end of this talk. To summarize, today technology, specifically machine learning, 
is playing an extremely crucial role in creating our content feeds and influencing what we read, watch, hear, and buy. And this trend is only going to grow stronger with recent advancements in machine learning. So next time you shop on the feed, don't forget to thank AI or blame it on AI. Thank you.